In this video we will begin to look at the topic of waves. We will define what a wave is and some of the associated terminology. So what do we actually mean when we say that something is a wave? Well the key point to understand is that all waves move energy from one place to another. They take energy from one place and they move it somewhere else. But they do it by using vibrations. Now this is the key to understanding waves. The energy is moved from one place to another and it does so using vibrations. When I ask students to think about different waves, the examples they inevitably come up with are this. They talk about water waves, the waves that you can see in the sea or a lake. They talk about light waves and they also mention sound waves. Now in each case it's important to remember the energy is being moved from one place to another and it's being done so using vibrations. But a more difficult question to answer is what exactly is vibrating? Well in the case of a water wave it really simply is the water molecules that are inside the water. As the wave moves towards you at the shore the water molecules are moving up and they're moving down. That's all they do. No water molecules move towards the shore, the water molecules just move up and they move down. With sound waves, the thing that's vibrating is the air molecule. So the nitrogen, the oxygen, etc. in the air is vibrating and it passes the energy from the thing making the noise to the eardrums of the people listening. Of course, sound doesn't just travel through air, it can travel through another medium, um, but it would be the particles in that medium that were vibrating in that case. Either way, the medium vibrates and transmits the energy. A more tricky example is light waves. At this stage, I wouldn't really expect you to understand much about the actual waves involved in light. But what is vibrating is something called an electric field and a magnetic field. Now that's something to look up if you want to find out more information, but it's not strictly speaking necessary for GCSE. Waves can be divided up into two main types, transverse or longitudinal. Transverse is the type of wave that most people think of when they imagine waves. In this kind of wave, the vibrations are at right angles or perpendicular to the direction of the motion of the energy. So imagine if we were standing at the seashore again, the energy is moving towards us from the sea, but each water molecule is just vibrating up and down, i.e. at right angles to the direction of the movement of energy. When looking at the spring in that video there, you could see that the energy was moving along the spring, but each part of the spring was vibrating at right angles to that movement. If the energy was moving upwards, each part of the spring was only vibrating left and right, i.e. perpendicular, right angles. That's a transverse wave. Longitudinal waves are much more difficult to visualise. They still involve vibrations, they still involve energy being moved from one place to another, it's, it's most certainly a wave, but in this case the vibrations are not at right angles, the vibrations are back and forth along the direction of the movement of the energy. So the vibrations don't go perpendicular, they go parallel or back and forth along the direction of the movement of energy. One good example of a longitudinal wave is a sound wave. In the clip there you could quite clearly see that the energy was moving along the spring but each part of the spring was not moving side to side. This time each part of the spring was actually vibrating back and forth along that direction. Here's a diagram of a transverse wave. Now I've drawn here not just one wave but one and a half waves. It's really important to understand that one wave is one complete cycle. So we go from the start here and we go all the way around until we get to the same place again. It actually doesn't matter where you start as long as you finish at the same place. So we could start here for example and we go all the way down and then we go all the way to here. Now we have to define the term wavelength. Wavelength is simply as the name suggests it is the length of one wave. It's defined as the distance between a point on one wave to the same point on the next wave. Here I've gone from uh, the peak of the wave or the crest of the wave to the next peak. Here I've also drawn a wavelength but I've gone from the start of the wave here all the way to the start of it again over there. They are exactly the same value. 
Now, notice the symbol for wavelength. Instead of using W or L, the tradition is to use a Greek letter called lambda. It's something like an upside down Y, but it's actually called lambda. So when you're writing wavelength in algebra form, you can write that symbol lambda. The units, well, it's a length, so it's going to be measured in meters. Now, what else we need to have a look at is this particular measurement here. The measurement from the crest of the wave down to that center line or from the trough of the wave up to that center line. It's the basically the, the maximum displacement of any particle in that wave, how far it, it deviates from this middle line. That is called the amplitude. It's usually given the symbol capital A and it's going to be measured in meters or in centimeters. That brings us to another point. Transverse waves, they have peaks, or some people call them crests, and troughs. The peak is when it rises, the trough is when it, when it falls at the bottom there. Longitudinal waves don't have that shape. Like I said, they're very difficult to visualize. Instead, we have something that's broadly equivalent, and they're called compressions and rarefactions. Where the particles in that wave are squashed together, we call them compressions. You could see that in the video earlier. Where they're spaced apart, we call them rarefactions. And a wavelength would be the distance from one compression to the next compression, or the distance from one rarefaction to the next rarefaction. Definitions for wavelength, the distance from a point on a wave to the same point on the next wave. Amplitude, the distance from a peak or a trough to the mean line. Now there are two more definitions that we need to have a look at. The first one is a word called frequency. Frequency has a symbol F and is measured in units called Hertz. You've probably heard of those units. Frequency it tells us the number of waves that we get every second. Now the frequency of waves can vary dramatically. For example, sound waves, we can hear 20 vibrations per second, 20 Hertz. We can also hear 20,000 vibrations per second. The next thing we need to have a look at is something called time period. You can think of time period as being the opposite of frequency. In fact, mathematically speaking, it is the inverse of frequency. Time period, measured in seconds, simply tells us the time it takes for one wave. That just about wraps it up for an introduction to waves. In the next video, we will have a look at how we can do calculations using the wave equation. Please do check out all the other videos. We've got videos on all sorts of topics associated with GCSE physics. And please do consider subscribing to Physics with Mr. Drew.